Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I have a new release ramble. So this is like a will I buy it style video. We're going to be talking about new makeup releases, letting you know which ones I'm intrigued by, which ones I'm not. Just kind of rambling about these new products that are coming out soon. So let's go ahead now and hop into it. I did film this look. It's going to be up on my Instagram shortly. I used the Modern Renaissance palette. I know many of you guys have this. If you want to see that, check out my Instagram. But let's start with the new ColourPop launch. Let me move over a little bit. So ColourPop is collaborating with Frozen and they're coming out with an entire collection, but the two products that I think people are most interested in are the two nine pan eyeshadow palettes. There's one that's themed after Anna and there's one that's themed after Elsa. And at first, I was like, uh, I just kind of looked over these. I was not intrigued by them, especially the Elsa palette. I kept thinking, I wish they would have done more with this and I wish they would have taken it more cool toned, but I don't think that the actual pans represent the swatches and then once i saw the swatches of the elsa palette i was a lot more intrigued by it i feel like a lot of these tones are a lot more reminiscent of the movie and the colors she wears and i part of me wishes they would have just gone like a step further with this and incorporated some more blues and some more silvers and some more like fun flips and duochrome shades but i also feel like with this i can only imagine that to license a product like this with disney is an investment and it would make sense that they want to create a palette that they think is going to appeal to the widest group of people and i think if they would have just taken it full blown like blue silvery cool tones I don't know if it would be as successful because I don't know if as many people would be intrigued by it. So I feel like when they are or when any brand really is working with a license and a partnership, I feel like it kind of makes sense for them to play it a little bit safe. Not too safe where it's boring, but just safe enough. And I feel like that's what ColourPop did here. But honestly, I feel like not only was this brilliant of ColourPop, but I also feel like it was a great time for Disney to collaborate with ColourPop once again because I'm a big Disney fan, but I will, I will say Frozen's not my favorite Disney movie. I have nothing against Frozen. It is fantastic. But I have other Disney movies that are more of like my favorites. But I knew they were working on Frozen 2, but I had no idea it was about to come out. So I feel like if it was not for ColourPop, I have a box behind me that Tilly is getting into. You might hear her. But if it wasn't for this collaboration, I don't know that I would have even realized that Frozen 2 was already coming out. So I think this makes sense. I know a lot of people will be excited about this. And I think the timing is also nice for gifting around the holidays. If you have someone in your life that loves Frozen, I think this could be a fun present, but I'm going to skip over it. While we're already talking about ColourPop, let's talk about the Coconuts collection. Why do I want this? I have these shades over and over and over again, but something about this is calling to me and I don't know what it is. The only thing that I can come up with is the fact that ColourPop basically spent all of 2019 releasing the monochromatic nine pan series. So they gave us purples, yellows, reds, greens, blues. They gave us everything. And so, this coming out at the end of that series, maybe it's not the end, who knows? They'll probably keep going with the nine pans, but this coming out after seeing so many monochromatic colorful palettes, it's like ColourPop made browns seem unique. They made a brown palette seem like something we'd never seen before just because of the timing of this release. If this would have come out before the nine pan series would have started, I think people would have been like, okay, yeah, I do think people would have bought it because many people wear browns very often, myself included, but I think the timing of it made a lot of sense for them to do it now. I also think part of the reason I'm into it is because of the tones of brown. They're not incredibly warm tone, but they're also not super cool tone. They're really that neutral shade of brown that we don't see a ton. Now, again, I'm not trying to say here and act like brown is a new thing because it's not. But this, I think, is pretty well done, and I don't know why I want this. I've kind of been working on a ColourPop cart. I think I'm going to place an order pretty soon. So, I mean, I'm probably going to talk myself out of this one in particular because do I need nine more browns? No. But would I use this? Yes, I would. Something I think is pretty fun, Peachy Queen is doing a friends theme palette. I was going to say collaborating with, with friends. I don't know if she's collaborating with them because nowhere on this does it actually say friends. It just implies friends with the frame from the door and the title being I'll be there for you. So this is kind of a friends inspired palette, I'm assuming. And I love the show Friends. I love 
the show friends so because of that instantly i'm like ooh, i'm intrigued by this and i know that that's going to be the reason a lot of people purchase this just because it's friends inspired but when i really evaluate it and i look at these shades I don't know if the color story makes a lot of sense to me. I think it's lacking a lot of dimension. I don't see that. I feel like all these shades are like mid-tones. There's nothing super light. There's nothing super dark. And I just feel like it's a lot of pops, but I don't necessarily see where these go together. I think that, I mean, truly, it's kind of a rainbow palette in an interesting assortment. And there are plenty of looks that you can do with this. But I think for a lot of people and myself included, what's really drawing us in is the theme of it versus if they just released this palette and it was called anything else. I don't think a lot of people would even look twice, but because it's friends themed. But I will say the one shade that I'm drooling over is that lime like neon green called Naked Guy. I don't know. Have you guys tried this brand? Do you have fantastic things to say about their formula? I would love to hear your thoughts. Sticking with random palettes, this is a Hot Cheetos themed palette. I love Hot Cheetos. I am kind of a wimp when it comes to spicy foods. I'm getting better. I feel like I'm growing a tolerance for them, but... I do like Flaming Hot Cheetos. I don't necessarily think this is something I'd purchase for myself because the shades aren't really speaking to me, the color story doesn't speak to me, but I like the idea that it's just a fun little six pan and this I think would be a really fun gift for someone. Maybe you work with someone in your office and you know like she's always eating Hot Cheetos and you have her for Secret Santa. I feel like this is a cute product for something like that. Okay, something intriguing to me. Sol de Janeiro is coming out with a new body lotion. This is their Brazilian Nude Cream. And one thing I'm really excited about, it comes with a pump. That is always my complaint. Last night I was applying my Sol de Janeiro and I feel like my nails, they're not even that long, but they're a little bit long. And so to dig in the tub, I feel like I just get gunk under my nails. So A plus for them for coming out with a pump version. Sol de Janeiro is known for the scent of their products. And the Boom Boom Cream is such an iconic scent. It's so strong and it's so, I'm gonna say loved. I, I could see that that is polarizing. Some people think it's too strong, but I would say most people that I've spoken to love it, myself included. So this one is an unscented version of their lotion, which is interesting to me because I know a lot of people buy their lotion for the scent. Like for me, the Boom Boom Cream, I can put my bathrobe on when I get out of the shower after I put the Boom Boom Cream on and then my bathrobe will smell like that for weeks. Like that scent lingers. You don't have to wear a perfume afterwards. You put that on, you will smell like that for the rest of the day. It will probably last longer than most perfumes. Like it is scented. I'm interested to see what people think of the unscented version. Personally, I'm kind of conflicted on it because I do try to avoid scent in my skincare, but I don't, I don't care as much when it comes to body care. I am intrigued to hear what people think of this because it is unscented, but it is formulated with passion flower and oatmeal. So I feel like it would probably have at least a subtle scent. So we'll, I'm going to keep my eye on that one. All right, let's talk about Il Maquillage. Now, first, I'm going to say I have kind of a bone to pick with Il Maquillage, and this is kind of a petty bone, but they send me so many emails and I have never signed up with them. Being on YouTube, I always have my email listed in my description box. Uh, I can be contacted by subscribers, by brands, whatever. Il Maquillage is not the first brand to do this where they reach out to me, but then they will like put me on an email list. I'm like, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for your promotional emails. I am not interested. And I have unsubscribed and I still get them. So let me just start this off by saying I'm already a little bit frustrated with El Maquillage. But they are releasing a new concealer and I do not cuss on my channel. I do in my real life, but on my channel I like to keep it appropriate. I don't know who's watching, if I have any moms with kids in the background, but this is called the... Frick I'm Fabulous Concealer. No, no it's not. It's called the Frick I'm Flawless Concealer. And it retails for $26. Natural matte finish. For my face, I love matte. For my under eyes, I like something a little bit more radiant, but I do think this sounds like a nice product, but I'm always a little bit turned off by brands and products that try to use very bold names to sell themselves. And I mean, I'll think back to plenty of Too Faced products like the Glow Job Mask, other things too, and 
as a consumer, that always kind of turns me off. I think your products should speak for themselves. They don't have to be catchy or gimmicky just because of the name. I think that if the quality is there, they will get the buzz. When a product has a very bold name, sometimes it's kind of to make up for the fact that it's nothing special. So who knows? I'll be watching some reviews on this, but those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think down below. While we're discussing marketing gimmicks, let's talk about Elf's new cannabis line. Now, Elf is not the first brand to do this. They're actually kind of late on the train, but this has just kind of been a trend for 2019, having cannabis themed and related products. Truly, I have nothing against this. I just think Sometimes it can be a little bit of a marketing gimmick, but I do think it's kind of cool to have an affordable option for some of the high-end products. Especially, they have an oil that I'm intrigued by because I really liked the hemp seed oil from First Aid Beauty and then I lost it. I keep thinking it's gonna show up one of these days. I have no idea where it is. But e.l.f. has a facial oil in this as well, and e.l.f. skincare is something that really does intrigue me. I like finding affordable alternatives. I'm a big fan of The Ordinary, though, and for me, their prices are even better than e.l.f., and a lot of times their formulations are even better. But a lot of these products sound nice. The Happy Hydration Cream has a cannabis sativa cream in it, plus hemp oil, B5, hyaluronic acid, and niacinamide. A lot of good ingredients there. I mean, looking through the ingredients, I see a lot of other good things. In addition to niacinamide and hyaluronic acid, they also have squalane and lots of really good for your skin oils. And it seems like a lot of the good ingredients are higher up. So sometimes you see brands do that where they'll say, oh, well, this has blank, blank, and blank. But then when you look at the ingredient list, like those are less than 1%. But these, from just briefly looking at them, seem like decent formulation, so it's something I'm interested in. I would not be against purchasing these or other e.l.f. skincare products in the future. All right, let's talk about Jaclyn Cosmetics. I have so many thoughts on this, and this is a very telling launch for Jaclyn Cosmetics. This has to go over seamlessly. They do not have a choice. Even the smallest little slip up in this launch could be detrimental to their brand. And I think it's already going to be so challenging for them to come back from what happened with the lipstick drama. I think they've already lost so many potential customers that are scared to purchase from the brand. And I think some people will probably run out and buy this release out of curiosity. But if Jaclyn Cosmetics wants to be seen as a respectable brand, this is a make or break launch for them. So I, they've got a lot of eyes on them, myself included. I think everything about this looks stunning. Packaging wise is fantastic. So I'm going to be really eager to see how everything plays out. I hope that they have their PR team ready. I hope that they were really prepped for this. I hope that there's not any issues with this. And I do think a lot of these shades look pretty. So my eyes will be on this. I'm interested to hear from you guys what you think about this launch. Did anyone purchase the lipsticks last time around? Did you have any issues? And finally, Urban Decay's holiday release. This one caught me off guard. So this is the Party Favor palette. It is six pans. They look like beautiful, fun topper shades. And this is so unexpected for an Urban Decay holiday release. They tend to stick with fun, bright, colorful palettes. The last couple years we've seen kind of a take on a rainbow palette, something that the brand wouldn't typically release throughout the year. I feel like they've taken the holiday season as an opportunity to have fun. And this palette is a little bit more on the tame side, but I don't know why I'm kind of feeling this. I think a lot of these colors would be really pretty topper shades, but I do think $29 is a bit pricey for six shadows. So I will not be purchasing this for the full price. However, as we all know, this will probably end up in TJ Maxx in a couple months, so maybe if it's a good deal there, and I've heard some good reviews, I don't know. I think it's kind of pretty. I think it's a fun, sparkly, unique twist. I feel like this could be really cool for New Year's, so if you're into these topper shades, maybe wait a little bit till it ends up on sale at Sephora or in TJ Maxx. <laughs> So that's going to go ahead and complete this video. Again, if you want to see this eyeshadow tutorial, check out my Instagram, but I will go ahead and see you guys in my next one. Bye.